नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई ई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम माई नेम इस तानवी खुराना एंड हियर वी आर विद साइंस क्लास फॉर ऑल द नाइन्थ क्लास चिल्ड्रन द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज चैप्टर नंबर टू इज मैटर अराउंड अस प्योर दैट्स अ क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरीज रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक इफ यू हैव स्टडीड दिस चैप्टर एंड देर समथिंग दैट यू डेंट अंडरस्टैंड प्लीज रेज योर क्वेश्चन वी हैव एन एक्सपर्ट विद अस एंड शील बी मोर देन हैप्पी टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेरीज देर आर मल्टीपल मीडियम्स थ्रू विच यू कैन कनेक्ट विद अस एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट बींग आर फोन नंबर विच इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन at this moment you're watching us on evidya channel number 9 and uh, also you can email us your queries on dth.class9@ciet.nic.in let me please introduce to you my guest for today she is mrs preeti goel ma'am a very warm welcome to you namaskar thank you thank you to you too ma'am ma'am is a former pgt in chemistry from somerville international school noida and uh, she'll be answering all the questions you have before we begin this discussion i have an announcement to make that is regarding india's g20 presidency we're extremely proud of the fact that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country this year that is 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of vasudhaiva kutumbakam or should i say the world is one family vasudhaiva kutumbakam also translates to one earth one family one future and that is exactly the theme of this year's india's g20 presidency so let's begin this discussion and uh, my first question would be to i uh, have an introduction regarding this topic which is is matter around us pure ma'am what are what is it that we are going to discuss in this particular topic yes dear tanvi so we will be discussing in this chapter about matter whether the matter which we see around us is pure and what do we actually mean by pure matter in chemistry or in science so as you know that there are many things you see in the market that pure milk pure mm. ghee mm. but that may not be pure according to science in pure in science means which have only same type of particles so first of all we will discuss this we will discuss about mixtures homogeneous heterogeneous mixtures and about solutions and percentage concentration of solutions these things we are going to discuss in this chapter Okay so shall so, we begin ma'am Yes let's begin so dear children you know about matter you have done in your previous topic what is matter and you all know very well that matter is anything which has mass and which occupies space and matter is made up of very very small particles in solids these particles are very close to each other in liquids they are little farther and in gases they are quite far from each other and these particles are held by forces of attractions you all know about matter this thing now how can we classify matter we can classify matter in two ways first way i had already discussed that is solid liquid and gases second way is pure substances and mixtures as you know pure substances are of two kinds elements and compounds and mixtures are of two kinds homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures so in pure substances the element and compound what are these i am going to discuss so first of all you should know what do you mean by pure as you go to the market i told you earlier also what does pure means here in markets the things which are available when we say pure milk or pure water it means that there is no adulteration nothing has been mixed no impurity is mixed no adulteration but in science pure milk means that it have water fats and proteins so it is a mixture it is not a pure substance according to science it may be pure milk but it is a mixture of water fats and proteins similarly pure mineral waters does not contain only water molecules it contains 
calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate and sodium sulfate along with water molecules. So they may be pure according to day-to-day -day life, but in science or chemistry, we do not call them pure substances. In chemistry, pure substance means which is made up of single type of substances or one type of particles are present. And mixture, when we mix two substances in any proportion, we get a mixture. Two, if we mix two pure substances, we get a mixture. And when we mix these two and there is no chemical reaction, then it is mixture. And if we mix two pure substances and there is a chemical reaction, then it will form a compound. Compound is also a pure substance. So pure substances can have one type of atoms, then it is elements. And if they have one type of molecules, then it is a compound. So they have their own properties. Pure substances cannot be separated into other substances by simple physical methods. But mixtures, we can separate into components by simple physical methods. And mixtures show the properties of the components. So we are going to discuss these things in detail. Okay. So as you can see here, element means elements and compounds are two pure substances. Elements have only one type of atom and compounds have one type of molecules. So both are these, they have one type of particles. So pure substances cannot be separated into simple by simple physical methods into simpler substances like carbon, helium, gold, oxygen, nitrogen. These gases are pure substances. They have only one type of atoms. And there are two kinds of pure substances. You can see here molecules may be of elements and molecules may be of compounds. So if we talk about hydrogen, they are H and H two atoms of hydrogen form one molecule of hydrogen gas. So these are molecules of elements as they contain only one type of particles. But here water has two kinds of atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. So it is a molecule of compound. So water is a compound. Hydrogen chloride, it has two atoms, hydrogen and chlorine. So it is a compound. But all these are pure substances according to chemistry. Right? And mixtures are of two kinds, homogeneous and heterogeneous. What do you uh, conclude from these two figures? In heterogeneous mixtures, there is no same composition throughout. It is not a similar configuration throughout. You can see here red particles are more at the top and blue particles are more at the bottom. But here in the second picture, you see they are perfectly arranged. It has the same composition throughout. So homogeneous mixture means which has the same composition throughout and heterogeneous does not have the same composition throughout. Another thing is that in homogeneous mixture, all the particles are in one phase. That means either all are solids, all are gases or all are liquids. But in heterogeneous mixture, some may be solid, some particles may be gases, some may be liquid. There can be mixtures of two different phases, right? So homogeneous, again, I am discussing, it is having a uniform composition. It has one phase. It is made up of very, very small particles and they are evenly distributed throughout. For example, salt and water, you know, salt is white in color. When we dissolve it in water, it disappears. Where does it go? it becomes in aqueous state. It is no more a solid. So we say all these states in water and salt solution are aqueous. That is, you cannot see any solid particle. Even with the help of microscope, you will not be able to see any particle of salt and wa water separately, right? So it is a homogeneous mixture. We also call it a true solution or simply solution. Iodine solution in alcohol, it is also a homogeneous mixture and a true solution. Vinegar, that means acetic acid and water is a true solution. But 
it's all true solutions can be solid also as you know stainless steel stainless steel is a mixture of iron chromium and nickel can you see the different particles in stainless steel then this is iron particle this is steel nickel particle this is chromium particle no so it is a, also a homogeneous mixture so true solution can be solid true solution can be liquid and true solution can be gases Okay. Any question coming to your mind? Yes, yes, ma'am. You just said that uh, salt is white in color, but these days in the yeah. market we have a uh, uh, pink salt as well. So is that yes. different from the white salt, or uh, it, no? It is it's slightly just a different. It is, has been mixed with certain impurities okay. which are good for health or okay. certain things. So that is why it is not a pure salt. In pure salt is sodium chloride only. Pink salt contains some amount of magnesium chloride and some other chemicals also. Okay, so is it healthy for the body or uh, one should it stick with good, the white? But yeah. it's not taken in too much amount. In proper amount, it is good. Okay, okay. okay? Yes. So heterogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures where the substances are not evenly distributed. Children, you see, sometimes your mom gives you milk and mix sugar. But when you finish the milk, you see some sugar is left behind at the bottom of the glass. Mm. And at that place, you find it is too sweet. So it is a homogeneous or heterogeneous? It is heterogeneous mm. because it is not evenly mixed property. So uh, when the substances are evenly mixed or thoroughly, it has the same composition, then it is homogeneous. Otherwise, it is heterogeneous. As you can see here, it is a heterogeneous mixture. We can see different kind of particles in different amount in different places. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. So one question is, can you tell me whether water is a compound or not? It is a compound, ma'am. Yes, it is a compound because it contains two kinds of atoms, mm -hmm. hydrogen and oxygen. Mm -hmm. When there is only one type of atom, then it is an element. But compound is also pure substances. Any other question I was expecting, ma'am, from yes, you? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, so when we are talking about water, water, definitely you said that it's a compound. It has two mixtures. What about air? Uh, is it a mixture yes. or is it a compound? That's what I was expecting. Air, air is a homogeneous mixture of nitrogen and oxygen gases and few other gases if there is no pollution, mm -hmm. if there is no dust particles, if only gases are there, mm -hmm. which is in pure air, then it is a mixture. It is a mixture because hydrogen and oxygen do not react, nitrogen and oxygen do not react together. You know about 79.8% nitrogen and about 19 point something percent mm -hmm. oxygen and few, very few traces of other gases. Mm -hmm. So pure air is a mixture of gases and it is a homogeneous gaseous solution okay. right? right liquid solution you know salt in water sugar in water mm -hmm. solid solutions i told you alloys are all solid solution now tell me this whether these compounds are elements compounds or mixtures iron sea water and milk iron will have what kind of particles only iron atoms mm -hmm. so it will be element element sea water Along with water molecule, it has lots of salts, lots of impurities, sand also. So it is a mixture. And milk, I have already told you, it is a mixture of fat, proteins and water. Mm. So it is also a mixture. mixture. Yeah. So now homogeneous and heterogeneous, in one page we can say that it consists of single phase, it consists of two or more than two phases, it has uniform composition, no uniform composition. Generally, true solutions are transparent if they are liquid and gaseous, but not solid ones. Alloys are not transparent, but liquid and so gaseous true solutions are transparent. And heterogeneous are again of two kinds, which we will be discussing later. One kind is called colloids and another kind is called suspensions. So they may be translucent or opaque, right? Right. Now we will discuss in detail about solutions. So true solution or solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more than two substances. So there are generally two components in a solution. One component is solute and another is solvent. The substance which we dissolve, which is in a smaller amount is called solute and the substance which is the medium or which is in larger amount that is called the solvent. 
So for a salt solution, solute is salt and water is solvent. Now before I go, I want to show you some, one very important thing. Now you see here. Yes. What do you see here? You see three beakers. We take 50 milliliter of water in each beaker. In the first, we add sugar. In the second beaker, we add powdered chalk. And in the third beaker, we add few drops of milk. And we mix them very well. After mixing, what do you see? You see that beaker B, we are able to see the particles. Hmm. But in beaker A and C, we do not see any particle. So when we throw a light through the beakers, in beaker A, the light simply passes through, but the path of the light becomes visible in beaker 2 and 3. What does it mean? That means that in beaker A, the light passes through and the particles of beaker A, that is a true solution, do not scatter light. But in beaker B and C, particles are a little larger in size and they scatter the path of light. So path of light becomes visible. This effect is called Tyndall effect and this is shown by heterogeneous solution that is uh, suspensions and colloid. In beaker B, you can see that particles are visible and after some time these particles settle down and such a mixture is called suspension in which particles settle down after some time. But in beaker C, you cannot see the particles with your naked eye. But if we try to see the particles with the help of an ultra microscope, we can see the particles. And that's this kind of mixture is called colloid. And this is translucent in nature. So what do you see? Three kinds of mixtures. One is true solution. One is suspension. And the third one is colloid. Now, if we filter the three solutions, what will you observe? that in beaker A, nothing is left on the filter paper. In beaker B, you will see some particles and the filter paper are left, some residue. In beaker C also, nothing will be left behind. You can see here. So in beaker B only, you see the residue, but in beaker A and C, no residue is left. So particles of true solution and colloids cannot be separated by filtration, but particles of suspension can be separated by filtration. So there are three kinds of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. So heterogeneous or suspension and milk and water form a colloid. Okay. Clear? Yes, absolutely so, clear, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, yeah. because yeah. we don't have much time left, I have a question to ask. So may I? Sure. You just said that alloys are not transparent. So uh, what would you recommend? Why should we use alloys instead of uh, no, the pure metals? Yes, you know pure metal like for example you think about the gold jewelry. Yeah. If the jewelry is made up of pure gold, it mm. will be very soft and it will break quickly. Mm. But when we mix it with some silver or copper and that is called 22 karat gold mm. and 24 karat is the pure gold, mm. 22 karat is not so pure. It mm. consists of 22 parts of pure gold and two parts of other metal, which may be silver or copper. Okay. So it becomes little stiff, little stable, and it does not break. So that is why alloys are more useful. And you know very well that if you take pure iron material, mm. they get rusted quickly. Yes. But stainless steel is an alloy. It does not get rusted even after using a long time, even if you keep it in water for a long time. So alloys have a better property than pure metals. That is why alloys are more useful. Okay. All right, ma'am, one last question I have for you. Uh, are the naturally occurring materials in nature chemically pure substances? Yes, naturally occurring, uh, pardon, I could not understand properly. So uh, the naturally occurring materials, are they hmm. in nature chemically pure substances? Can we say yes, that? No, naturally occurring is generally mixed. Okay. Yeah, either they are mixed with impurities or they are in the form of compounds. 
very very pure substances in nature are very difficult to find suppose you see gold mines gold mines are also mixed with some impurities even if the metal is very very less reactive impurities may be there or if the metals or non metals are very reactive they are present in the form of compounds so pure substances are very difficult to find and generally we do not find pure metals okay. or pure non -metals. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving a brief about uh, what is the difference between an element, mixture and a compound. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being a part of this program. It was wonderful having you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers for being a part of this program. I really hope that you enjoyed the whole program and uh, you got some information regarding whether the matter we use, we have around us is pure or not. And what we eat, what we don't eat, how are they? Are they transparent? Are they translucent or anything else? So thank you so much once again. I hope you have a great day ahead. Coming up next is uh, another program of English where we are going to discuss the poem Wind. We are going to understand and even appreciate the poem. So stay with us and uh, don't go anywhere. Before I leave, I just want to tell you once again that if you have not purchased the NCRT textbooks for this new academic session, you can buy it directly from the sales counter from 9 30 to 6 p.m. they are open on all the days including holidays and uh, they are located in New Delhi, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Kolkata and Guwahati. If you just want to download the PDF versions of these textbooks you can do that. Uh, there is NCRT, Diksha and Eparchala website and their mobile applications and uh, if you want to place an order from the website the website would be ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in just place an order while sitting at your home and you will receive the textbooks very very soon with no delivery charge that you have to pay for authorized vendors ncrt.nic.in is the website where you can click and uh, have a look at our authorized vendors and other information so thank you so much once again and have a great day ahead i'm tanvi kurana i'll take a leave of you namaskar